Hello, everybody. Welcome to a new big episode of Max Spoilers from MinMax. MinMax is a place about games, friends, getting better. My name is Ben Hansen. Thank you for being here. We're here, of course, to talk about Season 4, Episode 3 of Succession. Jacob Geller, let's go, baby! I can't believe it! <laughs> it's the greatest episode the show's ever done! All right, now, we have a big crew to talk about the Super Mario Brothers movie. Obviously, Jacob Geller is here. He won't stop screaming. We're joined by Brian Vohr. Hello. Finally, out of the Disney ecosystem to finally review some things. Although, I guess you're here to talk about Last of Us, so that doesn't make sense. We're also joined by Ross, the Star Wars Guy Fund. Mamma Mia. That's right. <laughs> Boy, Mamma Mia. We're joined by Leo Vader. Mamma Mia, everyone. We're joined by Jana Garcia. Hello. And we're joined by community manager Haley McLean. Mamma Mia. The biggest crew that has ever assembled. Um, but I guess it's telling that like we needed a crew this big because it turns out that Everybody in the world went to see the Super Mario Brothers movie this weekend. It's what the highest grossing animated TV feature. Two. Yeah, it finally conquered. You yeah, like worldwide. Wow. Yeah, so like Incredibles 2, Frozen 2, everything going down, and Miyamoto can finally get that yacht that he's been screaming about for a this very long time. This means that video games are legit now. We did it. <gasps> we are art. <laughs> Roll in your grave, Ebert. We'll be listening, buddy. <laughs> Uh, okay, we all saw this movie at some point. I saw it on Wednesday with my nephews. Everybody else saw it. Uh, odds and ends all over the place, all the fun stuff. I'm trying to get a sense of how do you gauge everybody's love for this movie. Let's see. Bottom of the frame versus top of the frame and pitch of your voice. If you can use that to calibrate how much you enjoyed this movie. Um, let's see, the high bar would be like episode three of Succession, season four. And then the low bar is like the worst animated movie you've ever seen in your life. Okay, and three, two, one, go. Okay, Janet is in the dirt. Am I reading that correctly? Oh my god, I'm, I'm the lowest one. <laughs> <Who would've thought? laughs> Wait, okay, okay. I, I am curious to hear everyone's take. Um, I'm especially curious about like kids takes on this movie so I have bad news for you <laughs> what well you have the mind of a child janet but like ross you brought your kid right <laughs> yeah i brought my five-year-old this was actually the first movie he ever saw in the theater and one no. of the first cool. movies he's ever seen because he just got like old enough to not be stressed out by every single thing he sees on a screen stressed out like scared or what does that mean yeah, like any kind of interpersonal conflict uh, up until like six months ago, he was like, I can't handle it. Like, wow. you know, you start Toy Story Wait, and Woody and Buzz away? argue. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, he used to like run screaming from the room as sort of uh, as soon as any sort of conflict or like tense music came on. So he Ooh. just got old enough to handle this stuff. He saw this movie uh, twice in the theater over the weekend. The the only two times he's been in a movie theater. Yeah, and, and uh, yeah, because uh, my wife brought him for on Friday, and I was like, I want to see this so I can talk about it with my friends. I was like, Do you want to go back with me? And he said, No, it's great, but it's really scary. <laughs> and then I wore him down over the weekend, and we went yesterday, and he he loved it. That's, so That's pretty sweet. much my take as well. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Brian, did you bring your kid or uh, is she too no young? No way, still? Bill. <laughs> okay, all right, all right, all right. So you went as a cool no. adult and just to enjoy it. Yeah, she's not quite ready for uh, for the theatrical experience. I think. <laughs> okay, uh, it's it can get pretty loud in there, especially the Dolby the Dolby theaters. Yeah, um, but one thing I I know Ross's son is a huge fan of Dry Bones, which made a nice big appearance, but it was probably the scariest moment of the movie. How did he react? My bones no longer his favorite character. <laughs> <He's> <laughs> favorite <thing. laughs> so we thought he was just like a friendly really? skeleton in Mario Kart, and in the movie, like you get to see the horror of Dry Bones actually carry for us. <laughs> Yeah, that was one of two parts where he turned around in his seat and like buried his head into, oh, the, no. into the movie seat. The oh, other one, no, was when those seats are so gross. <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> it hasn't been cleaned in thirty years. Uh, but the other scene that he found really scary is right at the beginning with the dog in the apartment. Really which makes sense because little kids are like that is a relatable scenario, like a mean dog that wants to bite you. I can relate to that. That's my so, size. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that is, okay, there's a lot of things that are fascinating about this movie. I, I thought it was a very fun movie overall, but, like, yeah, go, I went, brought my two nephews, and just, like, you know, probably 
to a gross extent. I was just like glancing at them the entire movie. Like, okay, what do they think about this? Like just for frame reference, like they played some video games. They, I just gave them my Wii U. That's like their first big Nintendo thing. But like, you know, I've played switch stuff with them and whatnot. And so like, we're going into the theater and my nephew called it the super smash brothers movie. I'm like, that's a very good sign of like where some kids are at for this thing. But then yeah. it was bizarre because the theater was filled with kids. I don't know what they're all doing at a Mario movie. This is for cool adults, Italian adults. Um, but like the theater w- was filled with kids and they're all like shouting out everything that they recognized. And it was just a bizarre, surreal environment to see that movie. Like, you and know, I was like, write that down, write that down. Right, right. But like, no, there was a, you know, at the beginning you had like the Nintendo logo and they played like the original Mario theme and whatnot. And like this kid behind me was like singing along to it. And he goes, that's, that's from the original Mario. I, I played that one. It's from 1917. And all the other kids are like, oh, okay, cool, cool. And then like I when the Titanic was on the ocean. <laughs> but I was, was like, fascinated by like American history. Throughout this movie, it's like I enjoyed it overall. And maybe just the theater was too loud and I couldn't hear it, but I'm like, I think I think it's a fun movie. I don't think it's a very funny movie. You know, and I was like looking at the kids for like, when are they laughing? It's like my nephews laughed at two things in a big way, and it was like when everyone gets their cart. Uh, and then it's revealing everybody's cart, and then Toad has the big monster truck that yep. killed. Hey, hey, that's when I laughed. Oh, really? That, that was maybe oh, my yeah. one like laugh out loud moment of the movie. I <laughs> got it. But the rest of it is just like uh, we'll put some things in slow motion. We'll say Mama Mia in slow motion a bunch of times, and then punching. <laughs> is that a joke? I don't know. Like Leo, the, it, the it, Mama Mia in slow motion. I was like, well, really? That was good enough to call back to. <laughs> 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 Did you think they it was really funny, Leo? I was in there like three times. I was just like, I guess kids like slow motion or movie execs think kids like slow motion. I think it's exactly that. I think the first couple times you did animated movies, like it killed. And now it's just like default fart joke, butt joke, slow motion. Let's just throw that in there every 20 minutes because we think that kids like it. But I was looking at these kids' faces. Just ice in their veins. <laughs> no, no reaction. I was really glad I saw it in a theater. Like full of kids that was the best way to possibly see this movie and for a lot of reasons including on the humor front yeah uh that line that's how you princess <laughs> oh my god that toad utters i was like never in a million years would that cause a human being to eject laughter from their mouth but on both sides of the theater two giant laughs really a couple people loved that moment would now very nice were those people escorted out of the theater when donkey kong said it's on like donkey kong and they continued laughing or <laughs> Yeah, the EMTs game. <laughs> <laughs> I I probably d- had at least five to seven laugh out loud moments, which I cannot recall. That Toad thing I remember now yep. that you bring it up. But I remember also being like, I don't know why I don't know why I'm the only one laughing at that, and I feel embarrassed for doing so. It got me in the biggest way with the shy guys. Also scary, I think, if you're a kid. I can see the shy guys being yeah. scarier than dry bones, even though they had their big horror set piece but like when the weird shy guy with the mask when he speaks and he's like we found him in the shadow land he just has this absurd voice like that's i think what made me laugh the most but i think i like donkey kong maybe my like most consistently laughed at character one of which was just hearing seth rogan's laugh come out of like <laughs> like when mario is really small and donkey kong's mouth is in front of him and he right. just laughs like <laughs> 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 But then he says, there's that line about, like, uh, he's like, my father never thought I'd become anything. And Mario was like, oh, my father said that, too. And Donkey Kong was like, well, your dad was right. (laughs) Yeah, I laughed at that. I also, um, I laughed a lot because um, the movie's kind of dumb to me. Like, it was funny how fan fiction-y it felt. Like, it, it had this weird, like, humanity to it on creatures that are very, like, otherworldly so that was just amusing to me yeah and the thing that i was like rolling out like i saw this with um my boyfriend my brother my sister-in-law and my dad my dad liked the movie more than anybody he was like this is great i loved it like he had a great time i was That's like sweet. good you know it's like the same the like, kids and older people i was like all right y'all have fun and i'm here facilitating the fun but i laughed at like um they're like them roasting them over the commercial, like the parents, because like my um, dad is like very judgmental like that in terms of why would you leave like the why would you leave a good job is like and you're bringing your brother down with you. And I turn to my brother and I'm we're rolling and we look <laughs> like hit my sister in law, his wife, and she's laughing. And my brother like whispers like, oh, why is everyone laughing? And like, we know because like we're both 
like freelance creative people like I do, you know, games media stuff. He just went to sports journalism and I'm like, yeah, we are like this is totally my life. Like this is very See? realistic. So I was just rolling at the freelance story aspect of it because I'm like, this is so accurate of like you're trying to do your own thing. Your parents are like, man. This is not it. <laughs> See, I mean, but, you say it's it's fan fiction, but it's relatable humanity, Janet. You are Mario, don't you I understand? I did see my life on screen, and then I started laughing even more when he was like, then he went in his room and sadly played his game. I'm like, Edwin, this is our lives. Like, <laughs> we love Kid this? Icarus. Yeah. Uh, just like after after the movie, your dad was like, I think he should have listened to his dad, Mario. <laughs> <laughs> he had it right. <laughs> I That's was right. like, they, they had me until the dad was like, I'm proud of you. I'm like, this is so unrealistic. <laughs> <laughs> my son's two biggest laughs when Mario. Mario gets the mini mushroom and he turns tiny instead of big. Yeah. And then when they force feed Bowser, the mini mushroom at the end. Interesting. Uh, both of those landed huge with me. And he told me of his own free will after the movie. That was the best part. Really? When, when they both turned tiny. So it's like that was good. My biggest laugh was, uh, when uh, Peach is fighting at the wedding and she takes the flaming spear or whatever and lights King Babam's fuse. Right, and, right. And he's got like a moment of panic and then sad resignation before his impending death. <laughs> in the last second. There's a lot of death in this movie. Uh, it seems to be the overwhelming thing. It's just, I love even the note that they end on of having the Luma just talk directly to the camera and just be like, life is meaningless, we're all going to die, so let's all play the saxophones. Like, yeah, that's... That's a cool note to end a children's movie I mean, on. Like that was the kind of, you know, I could picture myself in different ages through this, you know, and yes. it's like I think if I saw this when I was like 10, I'd be like that Luma man. That was yep. the funniest part. I love I like nihilism. I'm 10 years old. <laughs> <laughs> I get it. No, but it's funny cuz like the directors their last movie was Teen Titans Go to the Movie. I don't know if anyone's seen that, but it has like I a. I love that movie. It's so good, and that so movie good. also, to spoil a joke at the end, it's my favorite. Where it, it ends with Robin being like, "No, I don't want the movie to end," and then he's like, "I think it's like an iris closed," and he's like screaming at the audience through it. And he's like, "Kids, just ask your parents where babies come from." Bye. It like also ends just like a weird adult note to close out on. It's like I love that the movies <laughs> or the director is like, "Ah, oh, let's just do that same kind of format again." Also weird that there are two movies they've directed is Teen Titans go to the movies. And the Super Mario Brothers movie, like, how many directors have movie in the name of everything they've directed? It's they weird. don't want you to forget, you know, Please in case don't. there's any SEO confusion. That's right. All <laughs> cleared up. The follow yeah, up yeah. will be the Super Mario Brothers movie 2, or will they just go Super Mario Brothers 2? <sighs> Probably Super Mario Brothers 2. Yeah. I'm trying to think of other examples of like the blank movie. I don't know. Super Mario Bros. 2, the movies. The movies. Uh, well, we have epic movie, scary movie. Yeah. Right. Smart. Goofy movie. Yeah. What about like, oh, is there yeah. a Rugrats <laughs> movie? Did they ever make a sequel to that or something? Like, oh, yeah. Rugrats yeah. 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 go to Paris. Yeah. Paris. Yeah. Okay. Why so. Why did not know this? I've never watched. <laughs> Why is the best movie ever made? I'm, I, I didn't have, I didn't have cable I'm and I'm a little too old. Shame on you. I fit to the Mario movie. I'm young. I'm hip. Haley, what do you think about this movie? I thought it was really fun. Um, for context, my partner and I always there's like a, our favorite dive bar is next to the theater, so we go and drink a bunch of pitchers and then go to children's Perfect. movies. Perfect. Perfect. It just makes it way better, right? Like it's more fun. But we did that and I had fun. Like I kind of tweeted about after the movie. Like some people were like the plot, the pacing, whatever. I was like, I had fun. Like that's yes. kind of my takeaway. Yeah, it's like. I, I guess I get it. I saw some people critiquing, like, I went too fast. I'm like, it's not it's not the final season of Game of Thrones, everybody. Like, did you want it to slow down? Like, I was happy with the pace. And, like, I thought some of the action was really great. Like, even that final sequence of, like, DK and Mario, like, platforming together. And, like, I could see rewatching this parts. over and over again. Like, it looks so damn good overall, which is... When, what? When the music synergized with, like, those gameplay right. elements, would you call that gameplay? It kind of is the thing that looked... Yeah, well, it's like gameplay. there were, like the platforming sections. Yeah. Right. It's like, I really liked all the platforming in the movie. Like when, <laughs> when they, <laughs> the which is so ridiculous, cool. but it's like, yeah, at the beginning they do the 2d thing. And then yeah. I thought that like peach running through the obstacle course, like looked really cool. Cause um, that was how she processed. Yeah. yeah. No, that's the thing is like, it's a weird note. I think to start out with like having that platforming sequence in Brooklyn, which I don't know if you saw, one of the 3,000 stories breaking out of the Easter eggs that like the layout was 1 1 for Mario that they're technically jumping through. I didn't catch that during the movie, but oh. that's fun. Oh, um, that's cool. But it was weird because yeah. I was like, as that sequence was going, I was like, wait, but I thought the arc of the movie based on the trailers and stuff was like Mario learning to become a great platformer. That confused me. It was inside <laughs> him all along. But it's, it's really, like, it's really good. And then well, he's like, like, the like, the like, the like, the like, the like, 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 like
Right. I guess the courses were harder, but like it seems like a weird storytelling note to be like, he's amazing at platforming, but now he has to go from like a six to an eight. It's like, a, uh, <laughs> well, let's okay. face it. One one is not that hard. I'm sorry to say. <laughs> yeah, you know what? You heard it here first. I My guess bad. so. I guess that's. Can we fair. can we just talk about like Brooklyn, New York? The <laughs> yeah. fact that maybe maybe I should have been more prepared for it, but just the fact that it's like it starts in like not New Donk City, but like Brooklyn, and they're like, here are the five boroughs. We're in one. <laughs> here are all the humans. Here's Mario's like senile grandfather. Like every yeah. every real life thing that they were throwing at me, I was like more and more kind of shaken. Especially by. when they're talking about like we're so thankful Giuliani cleaned up this city. It was like, well, oh I don't understand God. what's happening in the I mean, look, I. I don't see Twin Towers in that city. Jesus so we know Christ! That <laughs> uh, yeah. Here I thought the most disturbing thing in the movie was Mario and Luigi without gloves on. Yeah, I don't want to see their gross oh. fingers. Um, yeah. yeah, The okay, that whole idea of the family, that was like a good, and I'm not even, I know, Ross, you're like Nintendo fan number one, and Brian, you grew up with this stuff in a big bad way. For me, I think I'm a little bit in that Leo camp of like, i barely nostalgic about Mario like I really didn't play a lot of Mario growing up or anything but still it felt like a Nintendo epiphany like that table scene where it's like what are you doing oh my god is that Mario's grandpa is that Mario's aunt like who are these people and then there were like um in interviews Miyamoto said that uh that they actually drew those like 20 years ago that I guess Tanabe who did like all the old Mario art that at 20 years ago Tanabe just like drew Mario's extended family and they had the art. So then when Illumination's like, uh, could we get the, is there a family? They're like, oh yeah, I don't know. Here you go. It's like, oh my God, we have an exact version of Mario's dad who looks just like what Talon from Ocarina of Time. It's just like a one for one, which is bizarre. But Brian, did you, what do you think about like, blowing up Mario's lore that way by having so much family stuff? I thought it was great. Um, it's so weird to me when characters just come from nothing and nowhere. Yeah. Like have, they're like, oh, did you ever have a mom or dad? Like, oh, and I don't want to talk about that. Moving on. You know, like, give them a little bit of background. I really like the tiny thread where they give, let Mario, like, oh, he thinks mu mushrooms are yucky. Yeah, that was smart. Gross for him to have to eat them over and over again when he's going through that obstacle course. <laughs> just like little character threads, giving him just a little bit. Yeah. A little bit beyond, hey, I'm just the Mario you know and love. Like now everyone's like, he's the biggest hero of the world in the Mushroom Kingdom. And, you know, we get to see him be kind of an idiot. He's not like an infallible, like perfect Mickey Mouse type of guy. So I right. just liked having a little bit, of, a little bit of spice in there. And I think spicy it's spicy meatballs. Spicy meatballs. And I think it makes sense to having like uh Peach, like giving her a little bit of, of a backstory. Like she doesn't know where she came from. She showed up in the Mushroom Kingdom. And it's like, oh, that makes more sense for why she'd be latching on to Mario in that pseudo romantic way, I guess, if she's been stranded in Toad World for her entire life. It's like, oh my God, another human being. I need to marry them or something immediately. But there really wasn't any romanticism between them, at least not on her end. There was flirting. I mean, there's kind of like an implication of like, oh, he's flirting with her or whatever, but she never is like, it's like uh, Bowser's just like, oh, uh, which is what makes him like perfectly toxic, right? She's talking to another man. Obviously she wants right. to sleep with him. Right. Yeah, that, I did like, love what? how Bowser like, it's, was it's just a normal conversation. <laughs> I loved how Bowser was was completely irrationally jealous the whole time where it's like, you guys have never even talked and you're already just like, wait, do you think she like thinks he's cool? <laughs> like he was like trying to get piano, reports though. from the front line. <laughs> yeah, I love that piano scene. That was one genuinely where when the shot started and it's Bowser on that piano, people in the theater, like kids genuinely were like, what? Like, what is going on? Like, they could not compute what was happening. It's like, yes, good job, movie. You're confusing children by having Jack Black just sing this song, which as I was watching, I was like, this song has real uh, first draft energy to it. I don't know about this. What are you kidding? No, it was, I think it was brilliant. Brilliant? <laughs> yeah, because it was silly and goofy. And it also had like what, every good song needs which is an understanding of where the focal point is and a willingness to return to it over and over again of and just that screaming the peaches, peaches, peaches part. yeah and every time it came back it was like a little bit better like it was dumb but it was like <laughs> supposed to be dumb like it's okay. like a goofy wow 
odd Janet, I never character. thought you'd defend the hell out of that Peaches song and of everything with this well, movie. to me, I think, in, and I don't really like, I wouldn't say this is like a good movie, but I thought it was a good bad movie. Like, I've seen a lot of bad movies. Like, I've, I've seen Megan. I've seen The Menu. I've seen a lot of things I didn't like. Whoa, this whoa, like, oh, hang on. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, so, whoa. what are the bad movies? Yeah, what are you, know, what are you okay, doing, Janet? I don't get into it. It's like the pseudo-religious is a whole thing. Good you know? lord. Like, yeah, I've done that in the <laughs> <laughs> you can just say a good bad movie is kind of an okay to good movie. That's another way of looking at it, I isn't it? I don't think so, though, personally, but like I laughed, so that's something. Like, not, you know, when's the last time I laughed as much at something? But it's because I never knew what would <laughs> good happen. Good lord. Sounds great. Because it, it was so absurd. Like, you didn't know what would happen. You know, it's like, oh, why is Bowser playing the piano? Because why wouldn't he be? Right. Like, they can kind of just throw, you know, it's going to be a lot of Easter eggs and then just random stuff to fill the gaps in between. And I'm like, all right, like, I guess we're going here. I guess we're doing this. And I think that so constant surprise is what I feel like is the appeal point yeah. between just like, oh, there's baby Mario. And that's cute because I've seen him before. Uh, you know, that was adorable. Cute. Yeah. The, the Mario Kart stuff. That was such a weird angle. Like when they go to Donkey Kong Town, whatever the hell the name of that place is, Kong Village, or whatever. And everyone's on the carts. I was like, what a weird idea. But I guess you need to like plant the seed for the Mario Kart big action sequence, which, by the way, I thought was awesome. And it's like, okay, so we should probably need to plant it with Donkey Kong's people just so it's somewhere earlier in the movie. And it's like, okay, and I guess, like, the bananas are a big part of Mario Kart, so I guess that makes sense for it kind of... That's Mario Kart's home base? <laughs> that was interesting how they tried to make that, like, world building. Like, Mario Kart is how these guys get around. But it's also <laughs> well, interesting had... believing in the concept of death so hard in this movie, that death is a threat. And there's also, you know, their driver throwing the banana peel, causing the guy's car to explode. It's like, oh, so I guess he did die. <laughs> <laughs> there's, yeah. there's that scene that I just, like, I have thought about maybe this line more than any other individual line in it, where Bowser is just like, you're going to watch me kill your brother. Yes! <laughs> I laughed at that too. Oh, like, yeah. Yeah. Is that not hilarious? Like, it was so it's bizarre dark and twisted. Like, that's the thing where it's like, I never would guess that'd be in there, but like, it is, and it's very, like, straightforward and odd. Like, that's hilarious to me. Yeah. yeah children's media usually uses, like, your brother's out of here. You're, you'll never see him again, or like that kind yep. of language. He's like, I'm going to kill your freaking brother, bro. <laughs> and you're going to watch. It's just like, what's it kind of reminded me of like this movie had a little bit of threat level midnight energy to it. It's the totally office does. movie that yeah. um, Michael made. I don't know, yeah. right? But I'll believe you. Michael yes. Stern. I know Michael's what you're talking Stern, about. Yeah. yeah. Is, that a, is that a Rugrat sequel? <laughs> this is the office. Okay, gotcha. What, what about it? Oh, come on, come on, Ben. You, I've you seen the first three seasons of the. Admit Nerd you office. know what this is. <laughs> I don't know what this <laughs> reference is. Yeah, Ben what? Hansen sitcom Stan. Does what it, it get this office reference? No, I haven't seen all the office. But what, what about it is like an office thing. Um. So without getting too into it, because I think everyone in the world knows this reference. But Michael made this movie, and he'd been working on it for forever. And he was like, "Oh, it's called Threat Level Midnight." And you know, at one point they do a table read because they find his script. At another point, he's like, "Hey, y'all, I finally finished my movie." And it's you know very much a home movie where he's kind of like, "Oh, I'm this big hero, and you know, I'm fighting Golden Face." And the writing is very like, you know, like at one point Golden Face is like. Uh, you know how hey Michael how's your wife because she's dead or he's like I'm gonna dig her up and like hook up with her so it's, like it's just odd strange everything's things. just escalated in a weird way yeah, at one point Toby's head explodes like it's just a goofy like <laughs> it's gesturing at um a known plot but it kind of is smattered together in a way that feels very odd and homemade sure, and sure. The, you know production wise like I think the animation looked absolutely gorgeous in this film but in terms of all the actual content it felt a bit threat level midnight, but with okay. Mario characters, which admittedly <laughs> sounds amazing, but it does look good. I do think it's gonna be one of those movies, and you can say this about any animated movie, I guess. And Ross, you're experiencing it, it seems like in a big way of like 20 years from now, people are gonna be talking about, it and the internet's gonna be filled with memes of like, remember how scary the Mario movie was? That was so messed up. Like those dry bones gave me nightmares for years. That type of thing, you know. Yeah, it'll be why the scariest character in the Mario movie was the dog in in Brooklyn in the apartment. Right. Which, yeah. by the way, yeah. How'd your, how'd your kid feel about the eel? Because, like, Ooh, yeah. I thought the eel didn't come through as mu well as it did in the game. But, like, yeah, was it I, scary? I think it was too fast. It was just, like, a real quick uh, yep. flash. And I just don't think it fully registered that it was a giant monster underwater that was eating them. 
That is so true. That was a that was a positive. I was glad it did not register. <laughs> I mean, yeah, when we did the deepest dive in Mario sixty four, so many people wrote in saying they had nightmares from that eel. So I thought it was like, of all the things in this movie, I know it's just Easter egg of Palooza, blah 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 blah, um, but perfect for Easter. <laughs> um, but uh, like that eel, I did <laughs> I not watch it on Easter. <laughs> I didn't see she the eel thing coming. Mario's like, here. That's right. Uh, but yeah, when, when that eel showed up, it's like, oh, of course. Like that is such a smart addition. Like if you just. I'm sure at some point they had the whiteboard of like, Mario, what do people associate with Mario? And like when they get to the eel from Mario 64, it's like, okay, that's that's perfect. But on the um on the deal of like, we're going to kill your brother, you're going to watch your brother die, all this stuff. I thought like Mario Brothers movie, we probably talked about on the podcast, like where do they go? It's called the Mario Brothers movie. I was just waiting for the moment where it's like Mario and Luigi have a falling out. Like, oh, you never understood me. And then they come back together in the end to save the day. And like, maybe it's just, this movie's brevity that I can think, but I was just amazed by the idea that like, no, Mario and Luigi were like rock solid, loved and supported each other the entire that's movie. A, no that's nonsense. Another thing too that my like my brother had leaned over to tell me when we were watching it because he was talking when Mario was talking to Peach like in the um, f- field of the uh, fire flowers. He's like, oh, I just have never been away from my brother for this long. And my brother leans over. He's like, that's not healthy. It's been one day. <laughs> I know. <laughs> and stuff so, like that is just like. That's so funny because it's like it doesn't make any sense when you think about it for like a split second more. But I don't know. So I will say I wish there was more Luigi. I could have yeah. oh, done with more Charlie Day in this movie. He it, was one of the best performances, I think, as as Luigi. Yeah, but the fact that he kind fit, of had, even though he didn't act like change his voice. He doesn't need to, but he kind of had like the Princess Peach role of just like, all right, he was kidnapped. and They're trying to get him instead. So like, how much can you? cut back to him i thought it was bold you know knowing how uptight nintendo can be with all things with their brands and all this stuff like the fact that they called luigi lou so many times throughout the movie nope and then say and then and then like call luigi lou all the time no one thing we can take away from the don't start it don't start it but then also like calling peach peaches so much like god you'd think that like nintendo would come down like call the characters their names for the love of god but like the official trademark names right i I liked that that Peach was part was hanging around and part of the action action and the adventure instead of the one that was like kidnapped in a cage like she is in almost every game. Yeah, it's a nice twist. And but her her land was still under threat, you know. And she was it didn't feel too far off because getting getting married to Bowser was like his big threat and goal. But he didn't like have her kidnapped the whole time, right? And not just like. Playing with her hair and being all creepy, you know, like <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, her weakness was only the toads, right? Like she only felt weak when the toads were getting hurt. Right, so that's like her only thing. Toads were Otherwise, her life she bar. Could do whatever she wants is kind of the vibe they were giving off about her. Yeah. So they mentioned Peach's heart-shaped bangs. Is that yes. just something that everybody knew forever? Or no, am I... I was totally okay. with you, man. I had no idea. Like, has this always been a Peach thing? Is that she has yeah. heart-shaped bangs? I had no idea. There uh, were, I mean, there were a lot of those Bowser lines that I was like, is Jack Black just sitting in a room talking? You know, like <laughs> it, it did feel like, especially with the song, you know, it yeah, just felt yeah. like they were like, hey, man, go. Like, do right, whatever. Sure. We'll, we'll animate it. Yeah. Well, I mean, he did say, like, he's gone on for interviews to be like, oh, I just, you know, like a lot of them, I don't think. Well, I guess Jack Black. No, I'm, actually, I'm confusing that with Seth Rogen's Donkey Kong. Like Seth Rogen mentioned, like I'm not doing a voice for this, so if you want me, I'm, it's gonna sound like me. Right. So that's yep. why he's just like Seth Rogen, which is a little unsettling. Yeah. I thought for the most part, I really dug the casting choices. I know when they first came up, they were just like, "Whoa, this is very jarring." Mm-hmm. But when you sit down and watch the movie, I felt like it got into things pretty well, and they gave the nod to. To Charles Martin, like, yeah. immediately just to like get that out of the way, which I yeah. thought was cool. He got to be like that little jump man guy. Yeah, yeah. So is the implication that in the games then that Mario is just putting on a voice like he was in the commercial just to try and like hype it up and be cool? Yeah. It's, yeah, it's like a, a Spider Man. Problematic. Thing. I don't know. But if it's coming <laughs> okay. from inside the community, like, is it as bad? It's the age of the maid. I was totally Can like you watching yourself. The- I don't know. I was watching that commercial forgetting that like their voices were not going to be like that. I know. Their, over the top Italian voices sounded totally great to me. Yep. I was like ready for that. Okay. Uh, Though also. There's a cut where they did that, where they have just all the Italian voices. God, I hope not. I can't imagine. <laughs> I love that. I, I feel like the biggest takeaway here is like, uh, 
culture war over Chris Pratt like probably wasn't worth it. It was fine. <laughs> <laughs> People are quietly <laughs> waving the white flag like ah, I don't know, Chris Pratt sure uh, I guess he I guess he did it. Uh, yeah, he wasn't distracting at all, right? Like I didn't think no. about his voice. And it's just like whatever. He's yeah, there, there are a couple scenes where it's like, oh, is he having more of an accent now that he did in the last scene? And like that was the most I thought about it. And the that rest... happened a couple times. Or that, yeah, yeah. Uh, the uh, okay, the internet is not saying this. So am I out of my mind? There was the toad who was like at like the battle map and like laying out the plans. I think he had a mustache. I was convinced, like, oh, that's Brian Cranston, right? And there's just like no acknowledgement on the internet. Did anyone else think that? Am I completely out of my... Am I nuts? Now that you say that, it does sound like Brian Cranston. Thank you, yeah. Haley. Thank but you. But I didn't think it in the moment, but yeah. By the way, Haley, you're the first person in Min Max history to, when I say, am I nuts, where you're like, actually, no, I think there might be something there. Uh, so I do should have held up his nuts that he has there. Uh, for the reference, he was eating it. You. He was eating it before <laughs> I was he started And apparently that voice is, I mean, I assume you've looked this up, Ben, to yeah. confirm that it's not Brian Cranston. It's <laughs> Eric, Eric Bowser, who I... Do not know, though it is fun oh. that his name is kind of like Bowser. Oh, that's just that's the pseudonym for Brian Cranston, I think. Oh, okay. Uh, what the, was anyone else confused by that toad cooking scene where they're like, yes. "Your princess is another castle." And he's like, "Don't worry, I'll like distract him by fan. cooking." I'm like, "Am I supposed to know this from something?" One hundred percent. I was in the same camp of like, "Is this like an end credit scene for Captain Toad or something that I did not experience?" <laughs> I don't know I what see, that was. What, what, what was confusing that back about it? Does like he, why did he? he what was he cooking? Like, does he cook canonically, or does he like? Is, is he a chef? Was he a chef in, in like one well, of the games? It, it looked like he was going to be mean, and then he was nice. That's the yeah, joke. It, that's what I meant. Like <laughs> that was that's what I wanted. Like the confirmation of is this just something that like they just put in here, or is this supposed to be a nod to something? Because most things are like nods right. to something. Yeah, I so agree. I was like, what, I am think, I missing something? I, I think in the movie it made sense because they were like, when Mario and Luigi, and Mario and Peach and Toad set off for adventure, I was like, why don't any of them have backpacks? Oh, right, Toad has a backpack and he cooks and stuff. So that's like, their, <laughs> their journey makes some sense instead of just like a long walk with no food. So they did There is a Mario. chef yeah. Toad. in that kingdom. Yeah. Wait, there's a chef Toad? Just This just yeah, in, but- breaking news. There is a chef toad, but it's because of Super Nintendo World, the Toadstool Cafe that's new. He's like the little oh. master. Oh. Oh. So is he slaying in the, the theme park to me in this movie? Like, what, it, what <laughs> is that? No, no. He's something. just toad with a chef hat, which looks dumb because it's just sitting on his toadstool. Now that's the level of dumb that I can fully get on board for. I love it. I did yes. find it funny that Toad kept having to say that he was cute. <laughs> Do you think that's right. people wouldn't know that he was cute otherwise? Like, I feel like it's he's pretty adorable just generally. I should have like, done he had, that. Like three or four lines was like, I can't die. I'm cute. I'm right. the cute one. Like. Are you? Because I feel character. like you're saying it a lot. Yeah, I guess. What else do we have for Toad? Like, I guess he's cute. Some people think he's cute. Uh, and he he's is not cute. Really I think something. Toad is cute. I've never thought it. Yes. No, but no. <laughs> on the, in the theater, Toad introduces himself. He says, hi, I'm Toad. This kid in the back of the theater goes... Yes! <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, Toad's great. Deep cuts! <laughs> they got him. Uh, okay, uh, Ross, I feel like you would care the most about this. Um, the Tanuki suit. The way Mario was flying with that, it just made turn him into Tails? Like, that was so weird, wasn't it? Have they ever established that before? Did, yeah. yeah, inaccurate. He should, you know, he should have to get a run-up and right. then... But fill up his P meter and then he can fly. So he did do a tail attack with it, which I did appreciate. On the bullet bill, so, that was good. Yeah, so I did let it slide based on that. But uh, yeah, I, I, I did appreciate that. I think it was a Tanuki suit that he lost when he uh, knocked the green shell and then it came ricocheting back and hit him. Right. And he lost the power up. I was like, that's an authentic Mario experience. I'm glad they got that in there. They got that. I love to just a dumb joke. I forget who it is that sits down at the wedding and they sit on the shell and then it just keeps going oh, back yeah, and forth. No, on it's the it's uh, King bob Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. yeah. I was like, okay. It's just a nice little touch. R.I.P. I, I was struck about the review scores and... Jacob Geller, I know we just did a bonus podcast, which will be up on in the Patreon bonus feed soon, where we just lamented the idea of criticism and movie criticism in, pic- in particular. But like, Rotten Tomatoes has this movie at 56%. To be clear, I was not lamenting uh, movie criticism. <laughs> well, we talked about it. I shoved it. I, I shoved the conversation down, down your throat. Episode. So, you Jacob, s- this is what Ben's saying. That's your opinion now. That's right. You said enough of this criticism um, stuff. No, but I am, I am confused, and maybe it's like I just don't see enough kids' movies, and maybe there are other ones that are, like, better. Uh, but, but I saw it, and it was like... 
what what is like not being done you know what's like the <laughs> right. job that you want this to be doing that it's not right i guess what is like what i'm confused about i think I, I i don't have any hate towards this movie but i do feel like it was uh by the numbers and i think what Jan- janice said sure. about gesturing at being a movie with the lack of arcs resonated to me like the big yeah. finale is like oh the real power was in the power up all along that's a great <laughs> message <laughs> and it yeah. is like every needle drop is the single most predictable song they could have done like at From any given I, I mean that i do think hilarious. i do think the valid criticism is like it does kind of feel like a movie made in a lab mm-hmm. you know just yeah. just that it's like we're gonna we are gonna like nail this you know demographically um but like i i, I think it worked you know like lab burgers taste good sometimes the hell yeah <laughs> like, on those needle drops, <laughs> yeah on those needle drops uh you know i my favorite parts of the movie were when the brian tyler score would yeah. be orchestrating an incredible version of a mario tune that everybody knows right and i'm like do we need the needle drops couldn't we just grab more mario tunes and do more great stuff with these i know i also had associations with like the licensed music like i associated all those songs with other media more heavily so it felt weird i right. was like oh so the track oh so like this other thing it's like it last never of us felt part like two. it picked something <laughs> that fit what was going on they're just for like sure. i don't know this is like what people use and i thought like for sure like uh, jump's gonna be in here at some point right like van halen's a jump like oh. it's something I'm that's sure. and i had a handshake back going in that shut up and drive would be played during the go-kart stuff oh, <laughs> oh yeah. okay oh. yeah just take the wheel like, actually <laughs> uh, Wait, ralph kind of did that too so it's it, just did that. Like, it felt like another example of like let's just pull some ideas that this has been in this is how you like kind of cobble together i think it was also like 80s people associate 80s with mario so let's just go for the obvious thing and try and sell it but also like i had a weird experience where on saturday i saw uh ben affleck's new movie air about like signing michael jordan oh Oh, did you and like that was also just like a new 80s song every 40 seconds throughout a two-hour film so it's like okay we gotta cool it i like the 80s as much as the next guy but apparently not good lord um but i mean i I think think for me that would um, that helped set it in time and place Right. Whereas licensed music has nowhere in the Mushroom Kingdom. It has no place. It has no place. Get the hell Wait, out of here. Did this movie take place in the 80s? <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> take, NES, on they me. have smartphones. So this That's is true. kind of oh, a yeah. weird retro future Brooklyn. <laughs> right. I also want to know how the Nintendo Entertainment System exists in this Brooklyn that is also like based on Nintendo franchises. Because <laughs> right, the Punch right. Out Cafe, is there a Punch Out game on the Nintendo? Was the Pack In Kid Icarus? It, there's so well, many questions. That I think raises. everything has because it was what Jump Man for the Donkey Kong cabinet. So everything just has kind of yeah. like working title or a rephrased version of it. I think for the actual game. So because did they ever call it Kid Icarus? Maybe in this version, it's just like Angel Boy's Adventure or something. You know what I mean? And they have to right. go that angle for everything. Thing is, would Nintendo have become the cultural touchstone? And sold as much as it had, and broken the industry out of the great video game crash. If not for Mario, like that's oh. the that's the killer app that, that changed that, everything. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. So this is a version of the future where games are just old and barely relevant, and that's why they're still playing Kid Icarus in twenty twenty three. No, of course they did. Of course they did. Let's just toss Let's in. You know, the people game. that get it, get it. The people that don't, it's just like another thing <laughs> I in did the think- background. I did think that it should have been like a post-apocalyptic world since video games didn't have Mario. It was like, if right. Nintendo didn't make games, look at the state we'd be in. <laughs> you want this? So I have to give a, a shout out to like Leo. You had a really funny tweet the other day where you were like, oh, so, you know, I forgot how you phrased it, but it was like ripped to all the um, people that are going to have someone lean over and be like, that's Mario. <laughs> the, someone behind me, like when the phone went off was like, that's the GameCube. And I'm yeah. just like, oh, my God, it's like, <laughs> the tweet is coming true. Mission Another funny thing about seeing in theaters was at the end, um, a woman behind me was like, well, Brooklyn's ruined now because it's just. Because it was like blown up or whatever. Yeah, like um, yeah. So I thought that was really funny. Like kind of getting a few reactions here Thinking and there. Too much. On the whole, my theater was pretty quiet. Um, yeah. I mean, there a couple like gr- like kids talking randomly and like way in the back. Like there weren't that many kids at the movie, but there also weren't that many like people on like Easter Sunday or whatever. But at the end, everyone applauded though. Yep. So I was like, okay, they really <laughs> liked it. Um. So that's that's cool. I think as far as your question earlier with. The like critics like, oh, what were you expecting? It's a kids' movie. 
I think this is probably the best case scenario for a Mario movie because Mario doesn't have plot and the plot that it does have is awful. Like every Mario game story is thoroughly uninteresting or like I could write down the plot on a napkin. It's the gameplay that, you know, makes right, it sing. Right. So yeah, it's like, well, what else were they going to do? Like they added story to something that didn't have story. So it's and like, you know, I don't know. I think it was it was fine for what it was. But as someone that like I've seen plenty of kids movies that are like way better than this. And I think it is the yeah. You didn't have a you didn't have a story to tell. Even like watching the trailers, there's like that Pixar movie Elementals coming out. Yeah. Like it's a contrived story about like oh, people want to tell me what to do, but I don't. But it, but it is a story though. They have a message. They have. It's an idea, a story they have about takeaways. people not believing in your dream, Janet. It's what she connected with. It's about trying to get a, the approval but of like, your fathers you know from it's DK. Not, you know, and I know you know it's not. You know, it's like it, it's not really about anything. They just kind of threw in like, oh well, it's about like not giving up. But like barely, you know, but there's like I, two lines. That's yeah. not his motivation. Like this is a character with no real motives other than to bring things back to, I guess, how they were. But it's kind of very conveniently pulled along to those solutions. I, like, I just, you know, I he just doesn't have to save his brother who's kidnapped. Yeah, he just doesn't have the sauce. Like even Encanto was better yeah. than this, and I'm not really an Encanto stand person. You're just mm. naming great movies. Encanto <laughs> 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 was better like, than this. That's the, reality, that, that's the reality. Like there are good movies, and then to me, there's the Mario movie. Yeah, I think I, like oh, it's a kids film. Like there's a bunch of dope kids films. And yeah, I think Mario I agree. Has better than Trolls, but like talking. Yeah, that's yeah. I, I watched Ratatouille later in the day after the Mario movie, which is a totally like not every kid's movie is going to be Ratatouille, but that's yeah. just a perfect movie. But even the House yeah. Bunny, which I watched in between those two movies, Anna Ferris, Chris Pratt's ex-wife. Oh, uh, Mario. In the climax Drama. of that film, spoilers for the House Bunny, she's giving a speech to save her sorority. And I was noting in that moment, I was like, I'm feeling more about this than I did at any point in the Mario movie. <laughs> <laughs> I, I gotta say the plot ahead. is very light in the Mario movie but do we still feel like it was too much plot for Miyamoto because like as we right. learned during the Mario or the Miyamoto oh. Mid-Max show he oh. hates story he hates plot in Mario every time they gave him a screenplay apparently to the development of this film he just hissed at them which I thought was <laughs> egregious well it's interesting I mean he talked about in interviews how He's like, yeah, I really bonded with Chris Melisandre or whatever, the head of Illumination, because he also is interested in not so much stories, but experiences, making an experiential film. And that's what he wanted to make. And it's like it it kind of shows. I do think like, all right, they've got their character motivations for everybody. Let's just keep it moving. I'm not trying to defend the hell out of this movie. I also think like it was fun, but, you know, a lot of Easter eggs and I had a good time in it. But I don't I don't think it was a great movie by any means. But I think I'm just more offended like seeing that Rotten Tomato score, and I know I shouldn't care about review scores so much, but I see the Rotten Tomato score, and I think, like, wait, both the Sonic movies are kicking this thing's butt? Like, this is... Okay. This is so much better than the Sonic movies. The Sonic movies. And he said the Sonic movie is way better than the Mario movie. No. I haven't seen outrageous, the Sonic movie yet, so. Outrageously wrong. <laughs> At least for I, I, me. Yeah. I don't know. Hmm. Can we Yeah, I mean, about... it, it cruised along. I had a good time. And, you know, it hit those dopamine things with, in my brain whenever I saw a reference. I'm like... Yes, I get that. <laughs> mm-hmm. You know, yeah, finally, I, it's all paying off. This well, is that's what it feels like. Boy, I mean, that's you know? the point. Yeah. yeah, make it finally pay off. I think my my expectations too were low because of the Rotten Tomatoes, and also, you know, I'm scarred from the the old live action <laughs> Super Mario movie. <laughs> right, yeah. right, and the old Mario cartoons. Like if you watch the Super Mario Super Show, I mean, R.I.P. Captain Lou, but the cartoon on that was horrific. So. Uh, taking the long view, this is a great movie. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably the greatest yeah. movie I've ever seen in my life. Yeah. Wait, Wait, think it's is the, the best movie elimination bad? movie? <laughs> best elimination movie. That's a good question. I Hang think on. Sing is better than I like Sing. I've never seen Sing, and I guess I shouldn't even weigh in because I've never seen a Minions movie or yeah, no, I, I don't think I've ever really. seen any of them. <laughs> I think Despicable I, Me is like the highest grossing animation franchise of all time, but I've never seen really? it. Mm. Is anyone is good. Seen it? The first, the first one is good. Okay. Um, okay. There was, yeah. uh, there was a really uh, alarming trailer that I want to talk about that yeah. ties into this, which is, I'm, I'm curious if y'all all had it. Which was, they said a new movie from Illumin Illumination, the people who made these five movies, and then they just showed like an extended clip of each movie. 
Did, oh, oh, weird. Did no, y'all have I this where it was, yeah. it was like, it was like Illumination, we made Despicable Me. And then there's a Despicable Me joke. Yeah. And then there's like, and we made Minions. And it was like, it was weirdly like, we're going to get kids into understanding film studios. Like, Fun. you're going to be excited about this movie that we have nothing to show for, except that there are like birds in it because they're like <laughs> telling them who Illumination are. And I was just, I had never seen a trailer like it before. It's very well, strange. I think, I think it's about time we indoctrinate people into the pet degree of like game studio that makes good games can't make bad game and just right. bring that over to movies yep. because people have been telling me that my whole life with game studios uh, I, so have you heard of over. the marvel cinematic universe because that is what people act like oh 100 but i thought it was interesting too at the start of this movie that they had like the minion in the mario kart at the logo right yeah. like trying to just fuse those brands a little bit more and like it is, i'm so curious to see like where nintendo goes they bought that company and called them Nintendo Pictures now so they have like an animation studio and I'm sure with money like this Universal is going to be bending over backwards to try and stay on this Nintendo train but I wonder if this is going to be like the shot in the arm for Nintendo to be like yeah but do we need them because they certainly planted enough seeds in here to be like there's a bunch of galaxies out there. Who knows where these other tubes go? Like Mario they, galaxies. Ex- I mean, that's exactly where they're going with it. Um, <laughs> but like, they want Sony to animate this oh, so bad. Sony. Sony yeah, that'd be awesome. Like like Spider Verse vibes, but oh. like to Mario, that'd be awesome. I mean, it. They had at some point Donkey Kong when they're in the eel, and he's like, "You're saying I'm just gonna smash it? I'm smashing stuff. Smash, smash, smash." It's like, does anyone think they're not building up to a Smash Brothers movie ten years down the road after they build up all these different franchises and different galaxies and whatnot? That's what inevitable. That even, yeah. What plot would that have? I could never fight. Sephiroth fight kills out. Mario. Yeah. <laughs> Here we know what happens. More, that's more plot than this one at. Like, I oh. think, yeah, I mean, I think probably. Yeah. I do think I'm probably done seeing these in theaters for a while, though. I do oh. feel like this could have been a DVD Netflix evening. But aren't you thankful? You're better. thankful that you had that, like, you heard people in the theater reacting. I think, like, that is what I pay for the price of a ticket for this for, for this Children's type of laughter. thing. <laughs> yeah. Just, yes. Ne- just only soak only in like their laughter. Um, and I actually don't really like hearing people in the movie. All right. All right. Okay. So, <laughs> that's just me. Outrageous. I know everyone else is like, oh, this, it's fun when people cheer. This, like, I like to just watch it. When like, I feel I care about the movie, it's a totally different story. But this is, like... These kids are getting ten times as much out of this as I am, so I want to hear. It's like how I want to. I want to get like like a you know experience by proxy because it's like yeah, I'm not right. going to think it's a good movie, but they do, and that's what I care about. Right. I think I'd only say, feel that way if I had a kid that I was going with, or I knew or familiar wise, like oh, I'm bringing my like nephew. That's or that's you the magic of the one. movies is for a brief ninety minute window, they're all your kids. <laughs> yeah, that's legal. <laughs> you know, it's funny. My brother's like, if this is a kids movie, why are there are no kids here? And I'm like, it's because we live in Los Angeles. <laughs> like, there are people who don't have kids. Like, like, there's like four kids here. We have our careers. I will, I will say that in the moment, I do find it annoying. But then as soon as it's passed, it's like makes it more memorable in yep. your brain. Yeah. Because I once I saw Click in theaters, that Adam Sandler movie, <laughs> like how long? 15 years ago. Yeah. And there was a woman in the theater and my friends and I still talk about her who just was like the most expressive person watching <laughs> Click. Like, who cares? But spoilers for Click at the end when it's oh, like actually no, kind of sad. I when he's, I've been wanting to watch it. <laughs> Oh, go, don't listen, but he's on the ground in the rain and he's old. Uh, she was just like, oh my god, oh no. <laughs> like, this Wait, is there's like a... And I will never forget that, and I like the movie more because of that woman. Like, Hang on. Genuinely. Okay, yeah. spoilers for Click, everybody. Make spoilers for Click. So at the end, it's just like that scene from E.T. where Adam Sandler's just like really old face down in the rain. <laughs> a little bit, yeah. Oh I, Honestly, I once yeah. read an article about how emotional men get at the end of Click. It has it has a hold on, on emotion. He does wow. Slow motion on boobs, and then the rest right. is depressing. <laughs> That's what causes it. It's a, the movies. It's yeah. like cats in the cradle. You know, oh, his whole God. life gone by. I uh, wow. I don't know. Maybe I I'm, thought it was emotional because he's like welcome finally to Max giving spoilers on click. I thought it, you were gonna say it was emotional because he finally gives up the remote, and that's hard for men to do. <laughs> that's oh, a big lesson. That would be better. Uh, I I'm, I don't know if I should be proud of it. I I will. I will be proud of it. Um, again, like not a big Mario nostalgia guy, but during the Mario Kart sequence in this movie, I got a little emotional. I got emotional on a level of like, look at these, look at these MFers. They did it. They really did it. Like, I think it's a really good action scene, but I was 
surprised that I was like, am I welling up at this Mario Kart scene? It's I got mad they didn't pick my kart combo. My so lady perfect. Kart. Yeah. I was also looking at the kart combos and wondering like, like button wheels, button have. wheels. I thought they, they did. I, I thought that was so cool though. That was like yeah. the part where like as a kid, I would be like, I wish I had a video game that looked just like this of like, you know, them turning and then like the Kongs like making it as yeah. they picked was, was like the part that I could tell. That would have just captured my imagination. I it's would like be like, Mario Nintendo, could, give me that. If Mario Kart could run on like a PC or something, you know just what I mean? Imagine. Like truly be built True. there. Uh, also, we saw, because um, we always get there pretty early, so we get like the lead up before the trailers too, yeah. where it's like we're watching Nuvi and stuff and just doing trivia, like hanging out. And they had um like some Nintendo commercials and one was for like the Legend of Zelda, like well, Tears of the Kingdom, I guess. Oh, interesting. And it's funny because and my sister in law is like a huge Zelda fan. Like she has like a Zelda tattoo and like, you know, everyone here loves Zelda. And I'm like, man, this game does like not look good on this big screen. Well, it's so that's fuzzy. Tough. And I was like, oh, OK. And they're like, play on the OLED. I was like, we're going to have to because Jesus Christ. Janet, do you want to light anybody else up in this? Uh, <laughs> in this <laughs> I mean, there's still some the time. You know, okay. anyone can get the smoke. Uh, click, real click quick, before... in, in on here. You don't know what's coming next. <laughs> before I forget, um, I did want to bring up like the post credit scene yeah where they show the yoshi egg and it's cracking it's like is it appropriate to do that when we've seen yoshis in the movie yeah. already right. like across, oh that's so funny the river, I didn't think we all that. Waved at him. but that was the pink like, yoshi it's not like the cool green yoshi which is what like a herd herd yeah, yeah there, there are a bunch of them i guess there were probably so green funny. ones in there green but was implied it was, was yeah Godzilla reference I had to leave before the credits ended, uh, but that sounds exactly like the post credits thing in Godzilla, the American Godzilla with Matthew <sighs> Broderick from like 97. Well, now that you mention it, Matthew Broderick was there. I think he's going to be voicing Yoshi. Uh, so it is weird. I guess they're connecting all those dots. I, well, but it was like it was in Brooklyn, right? It was he, like it was oh, in like Yoshi's the tunnel system oh, in, yeah. in the real world. It was like so TMNT that's, vibes, but with Yoshi. Right. That's the twist. Like Yoshi is going to be in Brooklyn. <laughs> <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> well, no, I think it'll just be like I don't. There, it seemed like it was in that world between worlds, but then I guess they started their plumbing operation in the Mushroom Kingdom. But I think yeah, they're still going to be going back and forth. I didn't get that at all. They yeah, like we are excited to about... be in the Mushroom Kingdom with their plumbing tools. I'm like, we're talking a lot about that. Fun. Why are you working? We do toads poop. Funny. It was funny because like at home, like when we were talking about it later, and then my sister in law was like. Well, like in the in Paper Mario, like their house is in the Mushroom Kingdom. I'm like, the whole thing is in the mud. This is the, right. thing, the game doesn't have the other part. It don't make no like, sense. I don't know. It, it, they're, they're, they go back and forth. They're like commute. You know, they'll commute from home. I don't know. They'll commute. Hey, I'm sorry, I have to go now, but um, you can cut this out. <laughs> <laughs> okay, bye, Brian. <laughs> all right, that's probably a good place for all of us to wrap up. Uh, at the end of the day, perfect film. Nailed it. Uh, couldn't ask for more. Thanks, everybody, for, for joining for the Big Mac spoilers. Thanks for being here. Greatly appreciate it. Anybody have anything they're dying to say that we haven't said yet? Ratatouille last thing I want to mention. Yeah, Ratatouille is good. Yeah. That thing's amazing. Uh, yes, Ross? <laughs> one, one last thing I wanted to mention is that we walked out of the theater at the end, and my son, like, uh, looked at me and was like dad wasn't that cool like it yeah. was the first time he's like oh, been excited and been able to show me something because he had seen it beforehand and right. so it was, it was a very nice parent moment for me that's beautiful nice. that's perfect they didn't give full credits for the dk rap and it bugged me yeah grant kirkhope was on twitter uh being very expressive but like God oh, damn, was he? i wrote that song yeah he was he was He's, he's he's pretty sad about it, which which sucks. I mean, it's yeah. fun that they have it in there, but it's like, yeah, it, it, would it kill him it to put that in from, there? It says from Donkey Kong Country, I think, underneath it. And right. all the other songs have like six people listed. Yeah. They that's... need every dollar they can get. <laughs> <laughs> that's right, especially oh, seeing that box after turn. That's gonna be brutal. But fun DK rap was in there. Um, I thought it was nice in the in the credits that they list like Nintendo president, and then they said former Nintendo president Satoru Iwata. Oh, it's cool. like oh, that is a, a nice touch. Yeah. Also, um, I like the scene where Bowser and Kamek just about kissed, and then they're interrupted. Um, I loved that scene. That's good. That's good stuff. All I right, I'll buy you a turtle. <laughs> That's right. Uh, <laughs> all right. That's it for the Super Mario Brothers movie, everybody. Thank you so much for watching or listening to this episode of Max Spoilers. Um, if you want all of these in podcast form, you can do it by going to patreon.com slash minmax with two N's. All of the Max Spoilers are in there. All of the podcast version of The Deepest Dives are in there. All of our interviews are in there. Early access to the Min Max Show podcast that's ad-free is in there. Um, whatever you want most in your life, it's in that bonus 
podcast feed for Patreon supporters. Guaranteed. Also, Yo, speaking of which, yeah. Jacob and I's Pendragon discussion, I was thinking going through the warp pipes, that was like flumes on the big screen. That's so this right. Is a it is a Pendragon reference. reference all over this movie. <laughs> so if you love Pendragon, check out the max spoilers on Pendragon, which is also in the Patreon bonus feed. Uh, also, uh, heads up for everybody, uh, Monday, this coming Monday, April 17th at 8 p.m. Central is the next episode of Trivia Tower. So if you support us on Patreon, even at that $2 tier, you can jump in and compete in video game trivia. We're going to be going up against the next lander community evil brad shoemaker the bowser of the internet uh will be joining us we need your help taking down that entire community and brad shoemaker so jump in at that two dollar tier compete in game trivia you can win an astro a30 headset we have a ton of great game codes to give away for stuff like like a dragon ishin chia uh we have a lot of codes for everybody so jump in there support us and the full competitions in the discord let us know if you have any questions about how that all works hey jacob keller thank you for being here Thank you. Uh, Ross, thank you for being here. Mamma Mia. Leo Vader, thank you for being here. Mamma Mama Mia in slow oh, motion. I didn't get to say it. <laughs> Mamma Mia. <laughs> Jenna Garcia, thank you for being here. Yeah. <laughs> what is that tone? Conscientious objector. What is that tone? Uh, Haley, thank you for being here. Yeah. All right, uh, and I'm sure there's a big old discussion uh, happening in the Discord, uh, and Haley's the community manager there, so jump in if you're a Patreon supporter, say hi, and share a picture of your pet, and Haley will like it. Um, I guarantee it. Custom emoji choice. That's right. For your pet. All right, thanks so much, everybody. We'll see you next time. Goodbye! Did you know that you can more than double the amount of podcasts from MinMax every single week by supporting us at the $5 tier on Patreon? You don't have to listen through the browser or anything dumb like that. You'll get access to a private RSS feed if you support us on Patreon. You put it in your favorite podcast app, and then bam, you can listen to our weekly bonus podcast party chat, the podcast versions of The Deepest Dives, MinMax interviews, Max spoilers, and you get the MinMax show podcast a day earlier than everybody else. So please help support independent games media head over to patreon.com slash minmax with two N's.